So you I'm trying to remember what I was five years ago. What year was like five years ago? 2013. I was a homeless man five years ago. Today we're talking about shut up. I wish my dad loved me. I don't know what you want to go. Is you? What? Today's special guest yeah, is the man who's wearing the Isaiah Rashad hoodie. Kind of cooler than mine, but the same color. Steering wheel guy. Steering wheel steering guy. guy. Got the only Bluetooth steering wheel that's... I mean, Bluetooth that's steering wheel in the whole world. Dope. 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 And who we got to the to the right of him? I think you already know who it is. It's your boy. Uh-huh. It's your boy. And um, you probably it's don't know me, but it's, it's Flip. 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 Flippy. 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 Flip Flip Not flippy. All right. Flip, You're doing a lot of talking. Flip it up. Are you okay? Yeah. I'll be easy. Hey, Albert. Hi. And Hi. today's special guest, who do we yeah. have over her? In Japan, they know me as Andy Kuhn. Andy Kuhn. Okay. I teach kendo and uh, ch chopstick. <laughs> catching <laughs> like catching, <laughs> <laughs> catching flies. With Anyways, we're going to talk about Mad Villainy. Because that thing turned 15 years old the other day, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, it's probably one of the greatest rap albums in the world, or of all time. Dude, Matt Villainy going through puberty right now, if that were a human. It's changing, your body's changing, your emotion's changing. Why are you looking hair. at me while you're growing hair in places? Why are you looking directly into um, my eyes? I just you grow a lot of hair. I started puberty this year. Matt Villainy. Matt Villainy Mass. Came out March 23rd, 2004. Nice. Uh -huh. It's a collaborative project by <laughs> MF Doom, mm -hmm. or uh, Metal Face, mm -hmm. Metal Fingers, Motherfucking Doom, <laughs> and I said Mad, but the and beat conducted. Mad, the beat conducted. Yeah. Slow Quaz. Huh? Slow Quaz. Slow Quaz? Oh yeah, yeah, it is Slow Quaz. Quaz. Or uh, yeah, also known as Slow Quaz. I don't know. I feel like this album has... A lot of influence on some of our more favorite artists. Like, definitely has an influence. Well, maybe not the album itself, but Doom in general. But has an influence heavily on Tyler and Earl. My favorite yeah. artist ever. Well, I can't say ever. Top five for sure. Different types. Yeah, so I don't know. Like when I when I first listened to the album, it was it wasn't when it came out mm -hmm. because I was just getting into hip hop when it came out. I was talking, I think I was talking to you, yeah. uh, Andy Kuhn, that, like, earlier today at work, that, um, like, I list like, when, around 2004, I was listening to, listening to like, Black Eyed Peas, Lupe, uh -huh. and I didn't really start getting into, like, I guess more underground and obscure hip-hop until high school. I was trying to say, because, like, I started listening to it in, like, 2008 or so, mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see that an album that's like an, at least it's really interesting to have an album in rotation for 10 years <laughs> and yeah like, right like I listen to it in its entirety every couple weeks yeah like wow it's really weird <laughs> like the whole thing just through yeah. through wow that's actually pretty crazy but I, I think like Cheeto and keep the biggest thing from that I took away from it was like these beats is fucking weird mm -hmm. like because I think my initial introduction to Doom was through Operation Doomsday. And like that was when it was more like, I guess, normal rap, you could say. The beats and everything was more what you would expect from a rap album. And then my friend's like, hey, you should listen to this. And at first I'm like, what the, f what? Yeah. Also, because like, I don't really like I, I wasn't really a big fan of albums that just had instrumental interludes. Because that's every... <laughs> huh? That's, uh, Matt Billing is just like yeah. constant, like it goes in in between <clears throat> Every couple tracks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get a nice little chunk of story, pretty much. And that was like, that's one thing that like continues through Doom regardless, though. You get, I mean, the beats or whatever, like, they vary. But everything he's done after Operation Doomsday has kind of had like sprinkles of a story in there. Mm -hmm. 
So, like, the, through the whole thing, they're just kind of be like, oh, there's these two villains, and just kind of, like, building a backstory for these two, who are technically one person, which is just really weird. But, like, that's also in, like, in um, the King Gator album he did, and all the Victor Vaughn albums. He doesn't, in, in Mm Food, he didn't do too much, but... It was, it was very there. little. It was there. It was definitely there. I think that was like the start of like the whole, you know, comic book sampling for food. Mm-hmm. No, that was the end of it. For what? Comic book sampling? Yeah, well, Kia's story. I don't know. That was at the beginning. Who's at the very beginning? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Very... I'm saying like that was like the last time. Oh, like, yeah, the... yeah, yeah. Because sure. even when Born Like This, which just turned 10 years old, um, came out, there was, there was samples was like that? that, but it wasn't as, you know, thrown in there. <laughs> It was a lot more, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the rest of the album, there's, I feel like, I was telling your boy the other day, or either Monday, or Saturday or Friday, like, even though, like, the album, like, I've been listening to the album so many times, I still pull, pull different things from it. Like, there's different tracks, like, like, grab my attention at different times. Like the one that I had brought up was um, Great Day. Um, I'm gonna pull the lyrics for it real quick, but it was, it's funny because the way that Doom was rhyming on it, you would expect him to go, like sometimes he'll be really predictable with the rhymes. So, fuck. Yeah, Doom is not one of those people. <laughs> Doom yeah. is one of the types of people that will have two different rhyme schemes going on in the same verse. And throw you off the very end with something totally different. Okay. Because, so, like I was saying, rhyme schemes be predictable sometimes. So he was saying, um. Last wish, I wish I had two more wishes, and I wish they fixed the door to the Matrix. There's my glitches. Fit so many verses, my job twitches. One thing this party could use is more. And he clears his throat. Itches. Booze. <laughs> 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 like. Dude's so self-aware <laughs> with like rap and shit. Boots, boots. Bitches. No, the other thing I really liked about it is like it's definitely a collaborative project. Even like these are also beats that Doom would produce. Like he's weird as fuck. Mm-hmm. But um, other than just like doing the beats, Madlib was also on there as Quasimodo. Oh, he was rapping? That was Quasimodo, mm-hmm. the dude with the high pitch. You, you know what's crazy? Mm-hmm. When I was listening to it, it sounded a lot like Eminem. Eminem? Like, Actually, yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. Well, like when he was doing his accent shit? Yeah, and I was like, is this fucking Eminem? And what? then I was just like... Dude, it's nah, like Eminem, if you were the size of an Eminem, but still rapping. I figure out what Shadow of Tomorrow. I can do that because uh, it was crazy it was, like, reminding me of how it sounds like Eminem. How, how it sounds like Eminem, but uh, it I like think it was Kendrick that had a track. Or was it Kendrick? I'm trying to think of who it was that had a track with uh, with a uh, trap called Quest. Uh, yes, it was Kendrick, right? And then they used their vocal oh filters God. over Kendrick. Yeah, you remember that? So they made him sound like pitched him up a little bit. Yeah, yes. exactly. So they made him. The sound pretty much fit in with the sound, and it was just so good. Also, but, the origin story of Quasimodo. Madlib just doesn't didn't like his voice. That's crazy. <laughs> so my voice is trash, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. The song was called "Shadows of Tomorrow." Today is the shadow of tomorrow. And I was like, "Is this?" I was like, "Is this Eminem?" So I, so I don't know. Maybe he got. I don't know. You know it's crazy, but it's crazy. I mean, that's also a sample in there. <laughs> Would M actually be on the track? <laughs> That's how you know you want to fight too. Like, honestly, <laughs> it sounds like shadows of tomorrow. That's just crazy though. Yeah, no, it sounds like old, old Eminem. So you said that he doesn't. So you said that he doesn't like his his voice. That's why he, he doesn't like his rapping voice. Yeah. Because he like people were saying that he sounds too much like Barry White when he raps. So he has a good voice. Yeah. So he's like, I don't like. That. That's so crazy. Like, I don't so like that picture. You beautiful change the pitch on his voice. <clears throat> I don't need that. I don't need that, that, that regular was, voice. Huh? Yeah. 
I like his regular voice. Uh, no, he when he raps like regular, it sounds cool too. Yeah. Like on some of the yeah, because on um, some of Quasimodo's albums, yeah, he's been he's done real, real talk. Or like in um, the uh, what is it? Um, he did a track with the uh, um Jay Dilla. Oh yeah, the well, pretty much all Jay Lib. Yeah, Jay Lib. Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't use Quasimodo. Well, maybe he did. I don't I'm, know. I'm sure he did a little bit. Things, yeah, he sounded fine on there. Um, I just want to let y'all know that. Uh, what did you think about about my film? Yeah, I want I want y'all to know that my Hold first up. time listening to it was um, two days ago. <laughs> two days ago. Two days ago. Stop, bro! Let's fuck off me. <laughs> I don't go down like that. Um, oh shit! Wow, I, 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 this, this shit brings back nostalgia. Hold on. What the fuck? Brings back nostalgia. Yeah, like a, he's in the booth. When I used to be rapping in the booth, it's just fitting my bars. I come so hard. No homo psych. Are you that close? Anyways, um, <laughs> my first time listening to the album was actually um, Thursday. Yeah, a couple days ago. It was like a couple days ago. It was like two or three. It was like two days ago, actually. Mm-hmm. But and before that, you've never, you've never heard of them. I mean, I heard of them, but I haven't listened. Didn't really like care to listen to them because I feel like like it's one of those things. Is like. Like you gotta like but. listen to them when you're going through a phase in life or when you're hot. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's like a lot of people have like hit like the like the phase of you know just like listening to them, mm-hmm. and then most people have had other phases. Was my phase was just a Jay Dilla phase because I used to make beats and shit like that. That's why I'm surprised you didn't listen to Doom. Yeah, they were on the same fucking list. But but it was just like they're literally working together. Yeah. But I never like. I don't know, it's different. But I heard of Doom, but I haven't listened to his music. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, I knew he wore the mask and all that shit like that, but I was just like... The mask and the cosmic color. Well, I think I heard, like, one... Uh-huh. One track <laughs> by him, actually. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I think I heard one track by him. Well, not one track, but it was, like, a project. It was... It was... It had something to do with food or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was, mm-hmm. like, meats and potatoes or some shit like that. I don't know. It was... Yeah, mm-hmm. that sounds about right. Reference yeah. to food. And I was just like, okay, whatever, you know, that's what the hype is about. And then um, I listened to him like a few days ago, and I was like loaded, bro, like, not gonna lie. And like, that's one thing that I like to do, you know, when I'm like not there. Like, I like to listen to like just like tracks and shit, so I can have like a different mindset and like a different approach to it. And I heard it, and I was like low key, just like, I was fucking with it, but I was just like, this shit is like too deep for me to like digest or just to listen to. So I gotta listen to this shit when I'm sober. And so um, I listened to it again the next day. And it was cool, you know what I mean? Uh, one thing that stood out to me, I would say, would, would be the beats. Just because, you know, um, when it was released, it was released in like 2004. So mm-hmm. that's not when I was beats do- from then. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. when I went back to work, I was like, Yo, is this like a remastered version or like it was released on 2004? And he was like, he was like, nah, it was released in 2004. I was just like, that's crazy because like the beats, they're not modern at all. It's like, mm-hmm. if you heard that, you think that shit was at least probably like early 90s, <laughs> like 93, 94, 95. You know, it's like the that. Like, all over the yeah, and it was just like this shit is like hell unorthodox. Um, Go over there. The beats, not not Go my over favorite. There. Not my favorite, you know, because it was really abstract and just all over the place. Really experimental. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think the only instrumental that I liked was the bistro. That shit had a vibe to it, you know what I mean? What about Fancy Clown? Fancy Clown. Um, I don't think I remember listening to that, honestly. I was, it was a really good one. <clears throat> it probably, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's like one of like the last ones. Yeah, I... I yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool. No, yeah, it's like oh, one of the last ones. Yeah. Dude, when the when the beat comes. Brian's on cast for it. You know what's crazy? Now that you now that you play it, like like I noticed, like the first tracks, it was uh experimental. more experimental. And then like towards the end, it was it started to sound a little bit more modern. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because like the shit was weird, bro. Because the first track is just like. It was villain. We're talking about the like, yeah, the actual the, intro. The, the, the intro, it, it, or, or it, it was weird. The, as fuck. The, the, the intro tripped me the fuck out, bro. Cause I'm just sitting there, just lowered as fuck, just zooted, 
And it's talking about villains. They but, be fun. <laughs> they're they're everywhere. I'm just like, what the fuck yeah, am I listening that, to? And, and, the, and the beat be going in and out. Yes, it is trippy as fuck. And I was just like, I don't know if I should continue. He does and have then, vocals too. Yeah. Every, every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. And then and then it was like once that like stopped, then you had like, the second track, which was kind of happy. And I was like, oh, this beat's pretty nice. Mm-mm, and then he started rapping. Had to throw you off oh, with that yeah. accordion. Yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta watch the music videos. I'm bored right yeah. now. Because the music, music videos kind of go with the, the song. There wasn't that many for. But I would say that yeah. it was definitely an experience. And you know when I was you know when I used to listen to the shit, I was like, I don't get what the hype is about. Mm-hmm. But now I see it because it's like it's a lot more experimental. It's unorthodox. Um, I think it would take me some time to kind of just like it takes time to warm up too. Just to like dissect the lyrics a little bit more to see, you know, because. But other mm-hmm. than that, I mean, I would say. Hmm, other than that, I would say that I'm not disappointed. I would say I am just uninformed, mm-hmm. and I would like to know more. Like, I feel like, like this project would make me go back and listen to all this older shit. So you're going to do it? Yeah, I mean, okay. I got to, just uh, so listen, I can understand. Like, listen to Operation Doomsday for sure. Okay. Ooh. And, uh, Danger, and Danger Doom? I think Danger Doom would be more of your... Danger Doom is probably the most accessible. Yeah, you you probably, like... It's all uh, Danger Mouse beats. Yeah, because it's not so much, like, uh, unorthodox. Yeah, like, it's not super experimentally sounding. That shit, yeah. that shit... Tr- that shit tripped me out. I was like, shit, at least my high is not going out anytime soon, bro. Cause that yeah. shit can't... No, that will continue, your I was like, oh, shit, oh, oh what are you I would Dylan's. say that's a good introduction to MF Doom. So. But I would yeah. say that shit was more like a movie to me, too, honestly. Cause it was just like, it had like the whole, cinematic. like it had yeah, like the nice introduction. Story. And it was just like, yeah, it was dope. There's all backstory to it. It's art. Yeah. And you know what? I also think it paved the way for a lot of other albums. You know, just by listening to like the first few tracks of just like how he was talking about before with the content of it and like the flow of things. You know what I mean? And how it starts off with the introduction, then you got you know second track, third track, boom, 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 boom. It's all consistent with just like the storyline. You know what I mean? So it's damn near like you're watching a movie, but instead of watching it. You're listening to it, so just imagine you don't have no fucking eyes and you're blind. You just mm-hmm. listen to a movie. Like, like, I, I feel like that's, that's what it is. Yeah. But Jesse, round of applause. What do you have to say about this Hey, before we talk, let's keep this. Yeah. Uh, it was weird. My first introduction to the album. Uh, my introduction came in oh, oh, via uh, Jack. Because hip hop didn't exactly show itself to me until I want to say like 2010, 2011. Okay. And then that, really? I think no. I told you, uh, I spoke to you about this a while ago, that I used to browse the 4chan like, music. Oh, yeah, you did. Uh, the music, like, I told you not catalog. To. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, that's how I found out about it, because it was mainly a lot of people really idolized the album. Mm-hmm. And I used to go there mainly for uh, metal music, because a lot of people had a lot of good taste and a lot of, like, underground metal. And from there, I kept seeing because you could post the actual album artwork as the main picture for the thread. It's a very, it's very memorable, very memorable, and everybody would use it for a lot of hip hop threads. Oh yes. God! <laughs> yeah, no. Anytime it's something about hip hop, yeah, they're like, oh, well, here's Mad Villain. You know, like, hey, show me got something you. new. You got like Mad Villain, yeah. And it just came so apparent. I was like, well, it's let me essential. see what this album is. Mm-hmm. And I think I very first listened to it. Like, 2015. Wow. I think I was in just graduating high so school. So four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, haven't had, you haven't said a full you you statement. Had, what? Did Jesse say? Yeah, Jesse did. So, I think my, my take, um, I, I did not like the album when I first heard it, man. I was like, I was like, okay, I don't even know what how What were you listening hell. to around then? I, I feel like that happened around... Or when you start reading listening? I don't even know. I want to say it was either my sophomore, no, my junior year of high school, senior year, or like right after I graduated. Oh, you were definitely listening to like Travis Porter. And <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was listening to the end. I don't think I finished what I was saying. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> um, okay, so I was listening <coughs> to <coughs> like a lot really of like, like alternative and rock and shit yeah. during the time. Yeah. I was like, 
I don't know, dude. Some I was either it was either EDM or alternative. I had like two really big phases, but I remember listening to it because my uncle was like, he is a hip hop fan. He put me on to a lot of stuff when I was younger. So when he like started talking about MF Doom, I was listening to. It. I was like, yeah, it's okay. It's, I think the biggest draw okay. to MF Doom for me was the mask. What? The mask was the biggest draw to me. Yeah. For, I don't know. I, I don't know when I started getting into it. I think my little brother actually got me more into it. For real? Yeah. I gotta admit though, the, the mask is yeah, put them on the, floor, huh? the mask is like uh, appealing. Like you know, it, it gets your attention. I just love that he's taking the the supervillain theme and just mm, yeah. running with it. He really just did. He's like yeah. fuck it, this is what I am. Now. That dude like sprinted with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Well, I remember. Yeah, I think my little brother actually got me like really into him. I remember, like, he had it on his, like, playlist one time. He showed me, because I, like, gave my Spotify account. And I was looking at it, and I was like, you like, I'm a doom? He's like, yeah. So I started listening. I don't know what song it was. I feel like it was all caps. But I listened to it, and I was like, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and then, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I just started going back and back to him, and I started listening to all his other projects and his collabs. I was like... He's really fucking good. Like, uh, like track the, with Sean Price. his instrumentals are still kind of just weird and just exactly, yeah. But I feel like he just gives him his own charm, and you can just right <laughs> off the bat tell that that's MF Doom. Yeah, when you like, get some weird ass shit, yeah, you know that's Doom. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I'm a weird ass guy myself, so you know, it's like it's music for me. Oh. <laughs> MF Doom. MF Doom. <laughs> Any the first closing words? That trained me. Any closing words on Mad Villainy? <coughs> um, I liked it. It was a good album for my first experience when I was high as fuck out of my mind, didn't know what the fuck was going on, wanted to hear some weird shit. That's a good album to listen to. That's uh, a really uh, very, that's a very oh. concise recap. Um, is that bad or is that good? No, that was fine. You want me to do it again? No, no, you can you 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 edit this shit out. What you got today? <laughs> um, again, I did not like it when I first started, like, listening to, like, getting more into hip-hop, I would say. But I think it's definitely an album you have to listen to to appreciate and understand hip hop. Also, visit barforbar.com where I did a long ass write up in an hour. I got very, I got very into it. I was a very productive Friday night. Mm-hmm. Jesse, closing words about Mad Villainy. It's beautiful. Let me finish. Oh, I, I think ten out of ten. Okay. It, I it's say one of my ten. favorite albums. Yeah, it's an album I definitely always go back to for sure. I, mean, I wouldn't say ten though. As what? as I as I stated in the write up, your rappers, your favorite rapper is favorite rapper. Yeah. And the beat conductor came and brought I just finished the this. best album. Mm-hmm. Mad Lib. That's the it's a staple of an album. It is, in my opinion, pretty much an essential it's, listen. It is an essential listen if you're ever trying to even get into hip hop. Yeah, like Let people always say, like, album like they'll yeah, be, people be like, you have to listen to this album, to like this and that, and you know I've heard albums that pe- that are essential, but mm-hmm. this is like truly an essential it album. It's like a staple. It's an absolute staple. Yeah, like, like, it, it's beautiful. Right now, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Andy Coon. Andy Coon, you fucking mother. Mm, Slay on her. Anyways, Andy Coon. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <Hey. laughs> I feel like it's gonna be like, bro, we gotta censor this guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you have to say, Andy? How many fingers out of ten? Two. What? No, Two hands. Not hands. Oh shit! <laughs> All right, uh, fuck. I don't know those. I like it. I like it. I just cannot tell. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Kind of hard. I love it. I love it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Doom. I need a white boy voice right. for you, uh, your boy. Uh, two. A two. A two. Two hands. Two hands out of one. Ten fingers. This is for. And toes. Ten toes. I can't. We don't need. We don't need. One hand and one. Just one, 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 drink it. One. One. Uh. Foot. I can. Um, according to my expert opinion, I would say it's at least like a 9.86 out of a uh, 10.0. Why not? No, um, honestly, but I was just speaking. Yeah, it, it's really it's fucking good. Like, good. I love that shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not really a critic. I'm gonna just fucking say 10. Fuck. I don't know. I like anything. But yeah. So. Uh, I mean, like it's. It's in a, It's like a. I mean, listening to M of Doom. Uh, Mad villainy is. 
it's it's like it's an essential like hip hop. It's it's like part of your arsenal. It's like if you want to uh, really get get creative, uh, get it's some your inspiration. Rapper. Yeah, it's like your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Like uh, most Def is uh, is a big fan of MF Doom. I've always been on um, a fan of MF Doom. I I, I mean I even got the mask. Uh, I did get an MF Doom shirt a long time ago, but it's all like faded. Um, but yeah, and the vinyl figure. Yeah, the, and I got the uh, the um, all caps paid? vinyl figure. Dude, it's in my car. Uh, I, I didn't bring the car. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's I would say like that and um, um, Danger Doom is a good introduction to MF Doom if you if you really want to get into into it. So. Yeah. Did everybody go? Yes, I went already. I told you. It you listen off. to it when you're high or you're on some. Look, honestly, I don't condone do doing it. drugs. Do I don't condone doing drugs. But if you do drugs and you just want to calm down, listen to the album, bro. It's cool. This yeah. man does PCP ones. <laughs> Sherm's too. Yeah. Yeah, we just do shrooms and listen I'm, to the album. I'm addicted to BVC. I'm um, listening to BBC. I mean, BBC. No, PVC. <laughs> <laughs> Ever like the greatest story.